Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Devlin and welcome to this episode of the Pride Month Marathon. Today we're going to be talking about another series of books. I have the first two in the series here. The third one has not yet been released. This is the World Breaker Saga by Cameron Hurley. The two books are The Mirror Empire and the and Empire Ascendant. Now these are both quite thick books. They are adult fantasy. They're rather grimdark, um, I believe is the term that Miss Hurley uses. So let's get started. Okay, so the basic premise of this book series is that there are tons of alternate universes, you know, think of the multiverse essentially, um, kind of like in comics. Um, the basic idea is that um, one universe has, they've kind of destroyed their world, and, you know, they've ruined all their natural resources and all that, and they're trying to take over the other world, kind of like invade. They found a way to like go from one universe to the alternate universe, and they're going to take over. But the thing is, the like hitch in their plan is that you can only cross over if your mirror or your counterpart in the other world um, is dead. So, you know, if person A and person B are like, okay, we're gonna go over and fight, you know, person A can go through because person A's mirror counterpart or alter ego or whatever is dead, but person B can't get through because their counterpart or alter ego or whatever um, is still alive. So that is the concept. And it's a book with multiple points of view and it's, you know, all different groups of people and how they react to this, how they fight against this, and then at least one of the points of view is from the enemy's side and it's just all this coming together and it can be a little much to keep track of but it is really good once you get into it, once you just kind of go with the flow and stop. I know my brain's like, I have to micromanage all the details, I have to figure this out, who's who, you know, what is every little detail, but you know, once you just kind of let go and enjoy and read and get sucked in, they're really good. So the magic system for these books, um, they're called Gistas, J-I-S-T-A which is, you know, kind of what you put at the end of it. It means, like, you know, witch, mage, sorcerer, whatever. Um, and they all correspond with different planets, and those are not planets, moons, because there's a bunch of different moons that are in the sky, and they have a cycle, and they go through. And each moon has to do with an element, like air, you know. I don't know specifically if it's... I guess it's not so much an element, but, you know, there's a something on the physical plane that they can manipulate to make their energy work. And one of the main characters, I think it's the only main character that's a magic user, um, is a blood witch. So if you're uncomfortable with a lot of like blood and gore, this definitely is not the series for you. Um, I think there are a few mentions of people, you know, cutting themselves to get blood for their magic. I don't think there's any like like self-harm for the sake of harming oneself but some people you know do cut their hands and their arms and stuff to get blood for the magic so that if that's something that's triggering to you that might be something you want to avoid yeah it's really good it's not you might be wondering how how is this a queer book you know why are we talking about this during pride month oh there it goes and sliding off into my pin cushion off into the sunset <laughs> um it i would say there it's a queer series um because it's just there's a lot of it, like, in the book that doesn't have anything to do with the plot, but it's just there. It's just accepted. There are, I think, four or five different genders, somewhere between four and six, and they're, you know, they use not non-traditional pronouns beyond, beyond he and she. They use here. I forget what other ones. I think, you know, there's all different sorts of pronouns that aren't what we think of as traditional. Um, there are people in same-sex relationships and gender is determined by each person individually. They are considered, the children are considered gender neutral until they, you know, kind of find a gender that works for them and sort of non-binary and gender fluid is accepted. Like I said, there are same-sex relationships. Um, and it's all different in different areas of this world. So you get a lot of things coming together and a lot of differences. And there's a lot of like gender differences like in some areas the women are considered the ones that go out and fight and the men are you know much like you know women were considered you know they're there to look pretty and you know that kind of thing and then in some places it's more traditional and you get those different sorts of clashes between um i'm gonna say identity culture i guess and it's really interesting because she just kind of deconstructs a lot of stuff that we're kind of familiar with and take for granted and i think that's part of why it's important is because 
it makes these things accepted and they're just a part of it and it's not really like oh this is revolutionary it's just you know it's the way it is and you know we all kind of are working towards that goal that you know eventually our society is going to be more accepting and more accepting of pronouns beyond he and she and you know people assigning themselves their gender you know and maybe maybe it's not what their parents or you know society assigned them or you know maybe society becomes less stringent with assigning genders to children you know it's just more accepting and that's you know kind of what we want to work towards and it is a very gruesome story so if you like dark fantasy this is definitely something for you and I'm like gesturing wildly with my hands um <laughs> they're really good and the author I do believe is queer I'm not sure um what her identity is but I know I've read in one of her other books uh, a book of essays slash memoir um slash autobiography she does mention being having a girlfriend and being attracted to women as well as men so you know she is not a straight author and it's always good to support queer creators and I really really enjoy her books it is the only two I've read so far and then I have her other book which I was the one I mentioned called Geek Feminist Revolution so if you're interested in that sort of thing, it's not so much explicitly queer, although there are mentions of her having a girlfriend in the past. Um, you know, if you're really interested in feminism and the modern history of feminism and just her take on all this, um, all of our society, like Gamergate and just, you know, anything really to do with feminism and sexism and nerd culture um I really think that'd be a good book for you I enjoyed that a lot I don't currently have it it's on loan to somebody else um but yeah that is really all I can think of to say about this I'd like to tell you more about the plots but just because these books you, you can tell they're really long like this one is okay close to 600 pages I'm not sure where the story ends and the glossary starts so let's say it's about 570 pages yeah 570 pages exactly and this one's you know 500 pages maybe yeah about 500 pages it, the, there's a lot going on so I would just recommend just dive in get one you know and read it and enjoy it and don't stress about the little details like I tend to Okay, so that's it for this episode today of the Pride Month Marathon, and I will see you next time, and I am super excited about our, I believe it'll be our next episode. It is going to be a, my very first Let's Play of a video game, and I'm very excited. So I will see y'all next time. Bye!